Hello, my name is Yehuda Blonder. I am 23 years old and I have FD. I was born in October of 1993. Although I was born a few weeks early, there was nothing unusual about my birth. Things rapidly changed. I was in the hospital for the first six weeks of my life in the ICU. Unfortunately, a lot of things were wrong. I had respiratory problems, I suffered from malnourishment, I had weight issues, and even pneumonia. This affected my parents very hard, but thankfully, after six weeks, I was able to go home. I was home, but problems persisted. I wasn't gaining weight correctly and wasn't able to cry with tears like most children. This may sound funny, but when I cried, no tears came out. I simply wasn't developing correctly. My parents were obviously very worried so my mom took me for a battery of tests. After some time, at 16 months, I was diagnosed with a rare genetic disease called familial dysautonomia. Most people know this as simply FD. We'll discuss what that means soon. My parents' biggest concern was the fact that I wasn't gaining weight. This affected my entire development. At about two years old, my mother took me to NYU in New York for a swallow study to try to figure out why I wasn't gaining weight. As you can see from this video, a swallow study is kind of a big deal. Big enough that it was video recorded. That's how we have a copy today. So what you're looking at now is me and my mother when I was two years old in NYU when my mother is trying to feed me at a swallow study in NYU when I was two years old. As you can see she's trying to feed me but every time I'm trying to take it down it's not going down because it's going down the wrong pipe. It's hard to understand this today, but FD was so unknown at the time that there really wasn't enough information to understand why I was developing this way. With the swallow test, the doctors recommended a G-tube be inserted in my stomach to help me get the nourishment and sustenance I need. And now a little bit about familial dysautonomia, FD. Familial dysautonomia, FD, is a rare genetic disease that has affected my autonomic nervous system, ANS, since birth. There are only about 350 people worldwide with FD. Since Daryasharam testing became available, there hasn't been a there has been a decrease of children born with FD. For me, the biggest biggest issues I've, I have to deal with as a person with FD is that I can't feel pain and temperature. I have a low sensory input. This makes something as simple as taking a shower or a real nightmare. I also cannot produce tears, which can cause major eye problems, but FD is more, much more than no pain and no tears. It affects and causes major problems in every main system of my body. On a daily basis, it affects my breathing, feeding, and stable blood pressure. I lack the most basic reflexes and instincts that children take for granted. I cannot control my blood pressure or heart rate. It fluctuates frequently, making me lose balance. Because I often swallow into my lungs rather than the stomach, I often suffer from pneumonia. This is one of the reasons why I have a feeding tube, so that I can be fed directly into my stomach on a challenging day. One thing you'll notice right away about me is my back the curvature of my spine. The medical term for this is scoliosis kyphosis. 
Besides from making me shorter, having a curved back puts pressure on my lungs and can also cause pneumonia. FD was once thought of, a, of as a fatal childhood disease, with most children expected to live on average only five years to age, of age. Thank God we live in a time when advances in treatment have dramatically extended my life expectancy. FD causes a mysterious syndrome called a crisis, in which I experience ex extreme swings in blood pressure and heart rate, along with dramatically personality changes and a complete shutdown of the digestive system which I have no control over. Unfortunately, I suffer from crisis too frequently. The nausea comes on very suddenly, which means a rise in, in blood pressure. At the same time, I get a cocktail of meds via G-tube. We sometimes take my blood pressure to ensure the right amount of meds is administered. This crisis can come from infection, anxiety, or other unknown causes. Only God knows the problem. That's the tricky part. Many times, I need repeated doses of medication which makes me in a nasty mood crabby annoying irresponsible anxious and any other adjective you want to give me of course it is not my fault it is the medication the crisis itself where the body is reacting like in a storm when i come out of it i can feel very weak very tingly, very dizzy, very medicated. I must be supervised closely because I can pass out easily. Throughout the years, I have struggled with my condition. When I was in elementary school, FD prevented me from having a normal childhood because I was in and out of the hospital, sometimes weeks at a time. Most of the m children in my class didn't get the see me very often. Socially, I did have one good friend, but the rest of the class either felt bad for me or ignored me. FD also affected my academic growth as well. Being in and out of the hospital for most of my elementary school years meant that I felt behind in the basics of reading, math, history, etc. High school was ex also extremely challenging for me. I started the rest with the rest of the children my age, but after only two years, I had to quit. I simply wasn't able to make it academically. It was too challenging and remedial help wasn't good enough. The bright spot of my childhood years was my devoted therapist. Not all of them were great. Some of them didn't think I would ever amount to anything. My mother often tells me of a particular occupational therapist who once told her, Yehuda Lieb will never be able to type or use his hands to feed himself. My mother was obviously devastated. Thankfully, not all the therapists felt this way. I had a great occupational therapist named Helen who specialized in feeding therapy that made a tremendous impact in my life. She believed in me. She was able to teach me to use my hands correctly. Thanks to her, I can now type and have complete use of my hands. You'll never see me without my computer. Besides for occupational therapy, I also had great speech therapists who helped me with my speech deficits and physical therapists who helped me develop into the person I am today. With their help and their devotion, I am quite successful, if I may say so myself. I have many interests, like most teenagers. I love sports and follow virtually every type of sport out there. Well, besides NASCAR, I am an avid reader and read about a book a week, mostly sports books. In 2011, I started working for a health aid company in Brooklyn, New York, as a data entry specialist. 
My boss believed in me. He gave me a job without having any computer skills. Over time, I started lear to learn how to type correctly and I developed a healthy interest in com computers. Over the years, I moved up in the company and I am now assistant director of the IT department. I am currently going for a certificate providing my skills as a computer specialist. I'm also very active in the community. Two years ago, I helped found a local community synagogue with a few friends. I helped fundraise the necessary funds for the continuation of this great community center. Obviously, frequent crises and hospital stays throw me off, but overall, with a healthy outlook on life, I am able to achieve greatness. Thank you very much for listening. Questions?